Good afternoon, Ashmage253 here with a short tutorial uh, on how to do a Let's Play. Um, now, I expect this series to take four parts. Oh, you know, might might take more, might take less, so uh, please bear with me. I, I just want to show people how I do my Let's Plays and, you know, give, give a, a few pointers on how they can start their own if they're having trouble. Uh, now, uh, this uh, tutorial might al also be useful uh, for those that are already doing uh, Let's Play work because, you know, some of this information that I'm about to give you stumps a lot of folks. It actually surprises uh, uh, some people that I I have uh, taught in the past. Um, anyway, I'm gonna make a dedication on this video to Dave the Usher, who is trying with all his heart and soul and getting frustrated, you know, trying to run a Let's Play of a PlayStation game, a next-gen game, on an older Pentium 3. Now, this isn't something I, I would really recommend, but you know, uh, hopefully the tips I've given you so far, Dave, will help. And this one's going out to you. Um, anywho, we need to check several things to make sure the computer's actually up. It's not for doing a Let's Play. Um, first is... Um, Checking your computer's base specs, and we can do that by clicking uh, computer or my computer and clicking the system properties button or system information button. And this shows us how much uh, memory we have as well as the type of processor we're running. Now, for uh, classic games, uh, just about any processor will do, down to a Pentium 3 or Celeron of that same class. Uh, but for more modern games, uh, you really want a Pentium 4, Pentium D, Pentium Dual Core, Core 2, um, even the Core Duo in notebooks uh, will handle these things pretty well. You know, th that's pretty easily checked in system property. So, you know, generally, the faster processor you have, the better it is at handling large bunches of data, as in videos. Next thing you want to check is uh, your RAM, which is basically by going to uh, the same page here. Let me get back there. Now I have about two gigabytes of RAM in this machine, which is actually the recommended amount for Windows Vista, which I'm running. Um, I would recommend that if you're running Windows XP, you have at least 512 megabytes of memory. Same for Windows 2000, um, you know, but probably not more than that uh, on 2000. Uh, def definitely. Uh, 512 or more is better for XP, especially on systems with integrated graphics, which borrow memory uh, for their own use. And speaking of graphics, we want to check how much graphics memory uh, we actually have. And again, this is pretty straightforward stuff. With we go ahead and click on uh, Personalize or Properties, and then click Display Settings or Settings in XP. Alright, so we're going to click Advanced Settings here and find that this particular graphics card that I have in this Sony Vio here has 256 megabytes of memory all its own. Now that's pretty good for a notebook. Um, you know, for a desktop, 
you want to make sure the graphics accelerator can borrow um, at least 64. If, if you're using dedicated graphics, uh, that is lots better than using integrated, period. I can't stress that enough. So, you know, if you, if you have a slot for a graphics card and you're looking to do a Let's Play and you're looking to upgrade your system, a graphics card upgrade is probably one of the easiest upgrades to do. Uh, next, hard drive. We're going to go to computer again. And Vista's pretty gracious about putting this stuff up front. Um, I have about 110, 111 gigabytes free of my 200, uh, which is actually two 100s chained together in a RAID. Uh, but, you know, for desktops, any drive of uh, about 80 gig or better will do. Uh, notebooks, you want to get the biggest hard drive you, you can get as long as the budget permits. But, uh, you know, your free space, if that starts hovering around, you know, 25% or so, it's time to take inventory of what you got and either upgrade the hard drive or clean it off. Uh, you know, XP and 2000 will show this free space stat in the left hand pane. All versions of Windows will show it here by right clicking the drive and going to properties. There's also this little disk cleanup button which launches Windows' own utility for getting rid of junk that might have accumulated over the years. Uh, there are several little utilities you can get that really clean up your hard drive if it needs it. Um, I recommend one called CCleaner, which you can get at uh, ccleaner.com. Uh, it's a free download, cleans all the crap that some programs leave behind. And, you know, get as much hard drive space as you can get, especially if you're on a notebook, because you're going to want that space for CD images and things. Next point, recordable drive. Now this is a must if you're making uh, CD images and things. I'm lucky enough with this machine to have a Blu-ray record uh, recordable rewritable or BDRE. I've never been able to find out what, what that quite stands for. Not even Wikipedia tells me, but anyway. It's a DVD plus minus RW plus a couple other things. And most current drives should be able to, to uh, you know, read the images off of, say, a PlayStation disc. If you're doing cartridge games, that's not as important. Uh, but for CD and DVD based games, you want a drive that can at least read those discs or if possible take the take a snapshot of them. There are several other factors that go into hardware, but those are probably the most uh, talked about, the most looked at as far as, you know, getting the hardware ready. For let's play, and, you know, if you don't have enough RAM, obviously upgrade the RAM. Uh, you know, if you have a desktop and, and your hard drive's not up there, I go ahead and upgrade that, as well as your graphics card. If that's not up to snuff, all of this is pretty easy to do if you're familiar with dinking around the inside of a computer. Uh, but if you're not, you know, just leave it to professionals like, like myself. Anyway, that's just part one of this little Let's Play tutorial. Uh, stay tuned for part two when I uh, cover software and how to deal with that.
Until then, this is Azure Mage 253 saying take care, everyone. I'll see you next time.